Good afternoon everybody and welcome. I am Mel Sol, Director of Instruction and Master Professional at the Mel Sol Golf School. We are located here at Pawleys Plantation Golf and Country Club in Pawleys Island, South Carolina. We also have locations at Holiday Valley Resort in Ellicottville, New York. I am there usually the last week of June and the first week of July. So for those of you that are in that area, put that down on your calendar, try and come and see me. Uh, the Canadians that have been uh, struggling to get across the border, I'm sure by next June and July it'll be open. Don't forget to put your dates down to come and see me. We also have it at Sunset Beach, Sea Trail Resort, three golf courses, absolutely fabulous facility. You can stay there, you don't even have to leave the, the place. There's a restaurant there, there's nice, three nice courses so you could do three day golf school, play golf after golf school all three times, stay there, what a fabulous time you would have. David Olberding, our instructor, uh, that's part time here and part time up there, he teaches most of the schools up there in uh, Citral. So today's monthly golf tip is about something that students struggle with a little bit and they're not really sure how to correct it on their own and they've been told they've heard the term coming over the top. Now coming over the top means that your backswing plane and your downswing plane, the downswing plane is over the top of your down of the backswing plane. So if your backswing plane is here and your downswing plane is there, it basically means your club head path is going to come across the ball. And depending on where your club face angle is, if your club face angle is closed, you're going to pull it. The club face open, you're going to slice it. Neither shot are going to go very straight. So how do you get the club to drop down on the same plane as you went back? If I go back this way, I want the club to come back down the same way to the ball. How do I do that? Well, the key is this right elbow. Most students, when they get to the top here, this elbow goes out that way. So the shoulders rotate and the elbow gets too far away from the body and then you come right across the ball. So the key is once you get to the top, and you can practice this at home just with one hand, where you can take it to the top and make sure that your elbow, you can see here my elbow is pointing straight down. It's what I call the tray position. It's like a waiter carrying a tray. When a waiter carries a tray, the forearm is at 90 degrees to the ground. He can't carry the tray if the forearm is over here. So that part is important because then once you get up here and that elbow is there, it's easy to let the elbow drop down. You don't want the elbow to move away. So some of you have seen uh, some of the players, Vijay Singh, uh, made it popular where they keep a towel under the arm. I'm not mad on that drill because what it does is it really restricts your backswing and I don't like that. I want the backswing to be nice and wide and the elbow to come away so you've got some space here but when you start the downswing I want that elbow to come down and basically you're bringing it down right onto this hip bone here so you want to actually feel the elbow dropping into that hip bone there and now you can see the club is going to be well behind my hands and when I swing like that I'm going to, my downswing, if anything, is going to be slightly on the inside of the backswing. Ideally that's what you want. There's not a lot of players on the PGA Tour whose backswing and downswing match. But there's a lot of players whose backswing goes here, they drop and the downswing is actually slightly on the inside. It allows them for the club head path to go more out that way and that will allow them to hit the ball a lot more solid. Some of the players will intentionally, they'll, they'll still come in here but from here they'll go through like this and they won't release. Players like Dustin Johnson you get a little bit of a fade. You, they, the club face is square and they'll cut across it. So when you see the ball in the, with the tracker, the ball takes off and you'll see a little baby fade as it comes to the middle. All they're doing, it's the same swing, but when they go through, they're holding, there's not the, the release that we would usually do in a normal shot. They'll intentionally hold it off like that and they'll get that baby fade. 
If you're a person that has a tendency to hook the ball, that's not a bad move to work on, is to stand and hit. And as I've always said in many of my lessons, when you start teaching yourself something, do it slowly. So I'm intentionally just holding it through like that, not letting the hands turn over. Do it slowly at first. Both of those balls went pretty straight. And so then when I add some speed, that ball's gonna go pretty straight. There's no fade, there's no draw. I'm holding it off. Remember all of the things that I mentioned this last month in doing the tips, when you practice, do the drills. Don't just stand there and whack balls. If, if you're working on this move, feel the elbow drop in like this, and then from this position here, swing through. Do little swings. That ball didn't go more than about maybe 60 yards. Get the elbow, feel it in there, do a little pump like that, and then just go through like that. I could feel my elbow in there. Once I've got that, then I can try and put it slowly, slowly, slowly into a full swing. Try that if you want to stop coming over the top.